Well, I haven't really given any instruction yet, but uh, this is the last one, so I'm gonna try and do a little bit in depth. Most of you that are watching this video are gonna kinda understand um, how to do this. I mean, it's not rocket science or anything, but this video is more gonna be like a uh, tips and tricks video, so uh, stick with it. So I usually like to do them um, um, one, one side at a time. I already did the back. Um, and then when you get here, you're gonna take these off. I mean, this breaks. You're just gonna take these off so you can get your, uh, whatever, your caliper off. Um, and then your caliper bracket's behind that. Uh, when you get up top, these are 14s, and then the caliper bracket's 19s. They look like a special bolt, but really it's just 12 point. Same thing with the back. The back is uh, 12s and 13s. These are, remember, these are 14s and 19s. So, yeah, we'll see. What the? What? Wait, hold up. What? Well, clearly somebody's been up in here because these are 12s too. Um, whatever. Uh, but I know the back's 19s, 19, 12 point. Sure, whatever. I don't know if this is uh, like required or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it anyway. Um, on the pads, you can kind of tell if they're busted up. There should be a little groove here. This one's almost completely gone. Um, once they get to that point, you want to just go ahead and replace them. Um, usually on the rotors, you can tell if you need new rotors by just grabbing this outside lip here. And if there's a lip from here to here, mine kind of still has some space on it, but you know, I got slotted and drilled rotors, so I'm gonna throw those on there because I like them a little bit better. Um, but yeah, you could usually, I mean, even if you have rims that have a little bit of a, a wide spoke to them, you can kind of reach your finger in through the through the rim and just kind of pick at it like that. And if you feel a pretty big lip and you feel this is kind of scraped up, then usually that's when I replace rotors. But the, uh, whenever I go get slotted and drilled rotors, they come with the they come with the brakes and the rotors and everything. So like whenever I buy a set, I just do them all, so I don't have to worry about them for the years in the future. Nineteen. Breaking the bolt's always the fun part, so just grab your hammer. Now, whenever you get here, you have your hub. I should have mentioned earlier, um, I learned the, the first time I did this, I learned that the best way to break these loose, you're going to have a little bump right here, is to take like some sort of screwdriver. Um, I, I sometimes like Phillips, I sometimes like flatheads. It just depends on how it's broken in. Um, yeah, I kind of bust this thing back up, um, but I do it while the wheel is still on. So if you do it while the wheel is still on there, you can kind of pop the little cap off that's in the middle and then you can stick your 32 millimeter socket in here and it kind of, you don't have to like leverage it. Like sometimes I put a ratchet in here that, that leverages on the ground and stuff. But if the wheel is still on, then it's stuck on the ground. You can just pull the e-brake and with these Land Rovers, the e-brake is in the actual transfer case. So it holds all the wheels steady. But if you try and lift it up and turn the e-brake on, this will spin because the other side's loose. So what I do is I keep the wheels on. I throw my 32 millimeter in here and then I put, you know, a big long ratchet on it. And then I just, I just stand on it, <laughs> stand on it and jump up and down a couple of times and eventually it breaks. And so that way, whenever you get here and you start to get your hub off and then you go to take this bolt off, it's already broken. So you can just take your half inch ratchet and take it loose. Now in the back. You're gonna have four 15 millimeter bolts. You're gonna have one here, one on the other side, and then the two up top are kind of close together. Just here and here. I know you can't see that very well, but there, there and there, these are pretty close together. You're gonna have four 15 millimeters. Um, the best way to do it, because if you try and get up in here, you can get like a swivel or something, but it makes it a pain in the ass with leverage and stuff. So unlock your steering wheel and just pull pull it one way or the other, which whichever bolt you're loosening. If you're loosening these two, I like to pull it this way, pull the steering wheel to the left-hand side. Mine's always unlocked, so um, I can just do it from the ground here. But uh, you, once you turn it, and I'll show you here in just a second, once you turn it, it makes it a lot easier to access. All right, now let's turn to the side. Grab my ratchet real quick. But I still grab a little swivel on there, half inch and everything. But even with that, I could still probably get to that without the extension because i have some wiggle room here and stuff like that same thing with up top once you 
do it up top. You could still probably do it with a with a extension, but I still like the swivel in there because it kind of gives me some gives me some uh, wiggle room. What do you think about all this, pal? Tell us. <laughs> what do you think? Huh? What? You sad because your uh, your vehicle's down? The adventure mobile's down? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Something I should tell you. Um, here's your ABS sensor for the hub. The wire runs back here. Um, and there's a bracket for your top 15 millimeter bolt for the hub. And that's one of the places where the ABS sensor is mounted. So I usually just keep this bolt kind of hanging around here. Um, and then I take this out and sometimes the hubs that I get, they always come with the ABS sensor. So I'll kind of show you how I, how I flow it through here and then get it up. And then it goes up to here where this grommet is. And then the grommet goes up to the actual where it plugs in. So um, we're going to go over that in a minute. I just want to let you know it kind of mounts here and then it comes over and mounts on this bracket. And then it kind of threads through these little clips and they're really, it's really easy to get out. You just kind of pull these clips back and take that wire out. Um, but it mounts up here and then it runs up and then I'll show you where it connects up top. It also helps if you have uh, one of these. That's nice. When you're taking the uh, Allen key out of the ABS sensor, pretty sure it's a five millimeter. I think it says five. Yeah, it's five millimeter. Um, you're going to have to take this out because I don't really like threading it all the way through and then through here because the new one you're going to have to thread through here and then connect into all the brackets and crap. But it's five millimeter, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, sometimes it's tight because it's rusted and stuff. I know you were hoping for uh, a secret to getting these hubs off when they're rusted like this. <laughs> Buddy, all I can tell you <laughs> is grab a big old hammer. <laughs> Also make sure you don't take your axle with you. Um, don't hit it too hard. Just kind of, just kind of tap a roo uh, to get it off the threads. But usually, if you smack the crap out of the hub, the axle likes to come with it. So just give her a couple taps and get her to go back in there. Well, I did it before I could show you how, but uh, that's the ABS sensor where it comes down, and then there's a little bracket down here that holds the two sides. So there's no real trick to get it out. Um, like if, to unplug it or whatever. Um, make sure your O-ring's okay on the actual sensor. They kind of just pull apart. There's a little tab in there, uh, but usually when they're old like this, they just kind of pop out, so yeah. So once you pop that out, you really you can just grab this thing and sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. You just gotta give her a pull. She comes on out and then take it out of all these brackets. I'm not gonna show you take it out of all these brackets. It's pretty easy. And little clips, just pull them back. If you buy all four hubs and you are trying to figure out which one is which, which one is the back and which one is the front, the ABS sensor for the front is considerably longer than the back. So if you see a big long wire, you know it's the front. If you see a short wire, usually the, the back ones are right around like a foot and a half or something like that. And these ones are probably like two, three feet. So once you see a big long wire, you know it's the front. I can't really run this wire and show you at the same time because it takes both hands, but uh, just kind of thread it through here. Um, I just kind of propped it up on the axle. Um, I just kind of walked through it, wired it through here. Um, and then once you kind of push it in, this grommet's gonna go in here. And then this next one goes up in here. And then of course you have the two little clips back here that these are gonna go into. And then the last little grommet the last little grommet piece is kind of down here. They kind of take a little bit of shoving. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of shoving. <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea. All right, now that we kind of got stuff like out of the way, um, I'll try and show you. So I just threaded the ABS sensor through here. Uh, this is the really hard bracket to get it on because this one sits like right, oh, can you see that? It's right next to the axle. Um, then it comes up here gets in there, um, comes through, goes to this bracket, this grommet goes in here, um, and then you can kind of see these little clips. I'm gonna try and get you a good focus on these clips, but uh, holy crap, did that lock or what? Dad got it. All right, oh no, it didn't. So you just, loop. 
pop it in there. And then this second one, and boop, pops in there. Then comes around, and you just put this guy through here. So then, man, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There it is. All right, here we go. Uh, and then you just line up this little stud. You can see the little stud on the top, and it matches that little stud that's right there on that one. Let's start a war. Which way do they go? Outside point touches first, or flipped around and inside point touches first? All right, I know I'm about to start a war on this one, um, but whenever I get slotted drilled rotors, um, usually I like the outside, the, the outside point to be the first thing that touches the brake pad, and then it cools on its way inside, and then when it goes to the inside of the rotor, the air ventilates out. I don't know. It is, like, see, this one says front passenger side, so it's telling you that the inside point of the rotor should be the first thing to touch the brake pad. Um, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> what you guys think um, I like to do it like this just because I've done so many of them and at this point this is the way that I like to do it so um, yeah let me know and uh, I'm just gonna keep doing it like this until somebody gives me a valid reason as to why it goes the other way so there's gonna end up being a part two to this video I'm gonna stop it here pretty soon the slider for my caliper it's frozen uh both on this one and in the back and i was gonna do do that one again and show you guys but this one's frozen it's like six o'clock and i got work in the morning so i'm gonna go ahead and stop it here but where it's gonna be a part two where i take this off and we're gonna take this slider out and then uh we'll put it all back together but you know new hubs on new rotors on brakes are back on we're gonna we'll see you we'll see you soon